Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Broken Sword Shadow of the Templars Director's Cut. Iron Classic Gamer, last time we um, dug deeper into the mystery of Nico's um, quest, um, got, um, followed the, the clown's trail and um, learned that he um, got his suit made by Taylor. We tried to um, ring him but he was very uncooperative but there is a bit of a humour to that story so I deliberately left it to call him back so I can show you guys the reaction. Um, we have now come to Nico's apartment. Um, before switching to Nico we actually called her, told her what we got and she invited us around. So we're here at Runjeri where Nico lives. She lives in this building over here. But um, let's see if we can go in. The door was shabby and in need of a coat of paint. I couldn't imagine the Kola woman living here. I pushed against the door, but it seemed to be locked. So we can't get in, but if we come over here, uh, over here, thank you. The woman was doing something with a pair of needles that couldn't be described as knitting. Oh, hi. Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good, it only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. What do you make of this tool? Is it something a dentist would use? No, it's for raising manhole covers. Formidable. Do you recognize this nose? No, monsieur. What can you tell me about this tissue? Nothing. What can you tell me about this material? It's a very expensive piece of cloth, monsieur. I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. My, oh my. What a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? How does this fortune telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. Alright, one thing I will do is turn down the music a little bit, because it might drown my voice out. So if it has, um, I'm, I do apologise. Can you really foretell the future? Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, I can't seem to see myself in the future. Other people, I have no problem. But when I try to see what might happen to me, nothing. That must be scary. Maybe. I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either that, or I don't have a future. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yikes. Thanks for telling me. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. <laughs> do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me in the apartment block across the street. I tried the door, but it's locked. You know, I've told the landlord about that a million times. It is a damp. The old building is like a sponge. It sucks up the moisture from God knows where. You mean the door is stuck because it's swollen? That is correct. There is an art to opening it. Don't shove too hard. Just give it a gentle nudge above the log. Thanks for the advice. How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. 
drafty windows insufficient heating. It's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves better. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. Have you seen anyone out here watching Mademoiselle Collard's apartment? Yes, I have. A strange man. Tall and thin as a broomstick. He kept his face hidden. But I saw his eyes peering from evil little slits. How was he dressed? A long brown raincoat with a hat. Or like Humphrey Bogart. Yes, but he didn't have Bogart's charisma. Besides, this guy looked like he needed a toilet. You never saw Bogart clenching his buttocks like that. Is there anything else you can tell me about Mademoiselle Collard? No, monsieur. Okay, so... See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. We can come back and talk to her if we want to. But we're just going to... Um, turn down the volume a little bit. Just a tad. Uh, and that should do it so okay so I think we should just save the game here remembering the flower seller's advice I pushed the door gently just above the lock Hi. Bonjour. I'm glad we could make it, monsieur. Uh, please, uh, call me George. Fine. I'm Nicole. Take a seat, George. Eh bien? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers underneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. You had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck. Hard work, I'd call it. What happened? My editor told me to drop the story. Can you believe it? But you're not going to do that. Oh, no. I'm going to find out what's behind these killings. It just doesn't add up. It almost feels like some sort of conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murders. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious, or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. Okay, so um, we have a few things we can do and to ask her about. But um, there is quite a humorous thing you can do. If you examine the, the clown's nose in the sewer, he'll um, notice something about it. But if you do it here, a funny conversation will crop out between Nico and George. And I'll show you now. I found this false nose in the sewer. Hey, what's this inside it? The contents of someone's nose? Don't be cross, George. It says La Rite du Monde. Masks and costumes. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint-Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. Okay, we're going to go to the, co to the costume shop so I can show him the cloth and it's not something I've done before, but why not? I have to go. Okay, I'll see you later. So, let's go to the costume shop. The guy's spoon-shaped face was mournful and humorless. He looked like a vegetarian in a slaughterhouse. Excuse me. Bonjour, monsieur. Please, come in. Welcome. Leave the mundane world behind. For in these four walls, fantasy is king. Uh, I don't want a costume. Didn't you ever dress up when you were a child? Not that I remember. Incredible. 
You'll be telling me next that you never shared your elder sister's lingerie. I don't have a sister, and I think I'd look pretty silly in a brassiere. I just need some information. Of course. How can I help you? Do you recognize this cloth? Oui. You do? Mais oui. I serve the man wearing a suit made from the same material. Do you remember his name? No. Do you want this red nose back? Not after it's been worn, thank you. Okay, so we can't do anything more here, so we'll come back in a little bit. Thanks for your help, buddy. My pleasure, monsieur. Allow me to shake you by the hand. Huh? Uh, well, okay. What are you trying to do, kill me? You did not find it amusing? I never saw the funny side of electroshock therapy. Eh bien, it is yours to keep. A gift. Do I need a license? No, but I give you a word of warning, monsieur. What? Remember to switch it off before you visit the toilet. Oh, that's n that's nasty. I have to admit, that is awful. Oh, can you imagine that? I don't even want to think about it, but anyway. Hi. Oh, hello. The guy at the novelty shop gave me this. What is it? A hand buzzer. You put it in your hand and give people electric shocks. Why? It's a gag. A practical joke. <laughs> if you ever use it on me, I'll break your arm. Okay, okay. I get the picture. This is the tool I use to get into the sewers. Fascinating, George. You're not interested, are you? Oh, of course I am. I think it was very brave of you to go down those sewers. Yeah? Well, it was kind of scary, but... Well, I had a job to do. I found this tissue down the sewer. <laughs> That's disgusting, George. No, no, no. I think the stuff on it is grease paint. Like actors use, or clowns. It's still disgusting. Get rid of it. Okay, so let's ask her about a clown. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arnaud Bellotta, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it, millions of housewives literally speeding their butts off. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was lured to his death by a snowman. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada. The controversial Japanese politician, he inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. How did he die? At the hands, or should I say flippers, of a giant emperor penguin. A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. I had been about to add mine to the list, but stopped myself. I really didn't want to have to explain to George about my father's involvement with Cachon. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you this, I will not be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance for a big break. Or an early death. Okay, so we're not going to ask her about herself because it does go on for quite a lot. We'll do that a bit later. So let's talk about the cloth. I found a piece of material near the cafe. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed a film I shot at the cafe. Here, George. It's an enlargement I made. Look what that guy is wearing. Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his right cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. Or a crescent moon. How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy behind you, of course. Okay, so there's nothing more to do here, so we're going to leave, and um, now we can phone Todrick back. So we're going to do that. I have to go. Okay, I'll see you later. Let's go back to the costume shop. Who 
Oui, monsieur. Do you want this buzzer back? No, you keep it. What does this tool mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. Does this dirty tissue mean anything to you? Hmm. Let me smell that. Best Imer's number seven, white pancake. Theatrical grease paint, right? Oh, oui, monsieur. La crème de la crème of Cespian accoutrement. Have you sold any of it recently? Yes, two cans. I'm looking for a man who hired a clown costume from you. Oui, monsieur. I do not see how I can help. Don't you keep a record of costumes that you've rented out? Of course, monsieur, but... Uh... Well, then, I'd like to check your records. Give me the names of everyone who's rented a clown suit. Impossible. There are too many. Have you heard of a man named Plantile? I do not recall any one of that name. Okay, so let's show him the photo. Do you recognize this man? Ah oui, he was here this morning. That is the man to whom I sold the grease paint. I remember the scar on his face. He chose two costumes, Bozo the Clown and Seamus the Pixie. A pixie? Very smart. Green silk with a taffeta lining. He gave me his name as Monsieur Khan. Thanks for your help, buddy. My pleasure, monsieur. Okay, so we now need to call Todrick. So let's go back to the cafe. And Grobler's not back, but in fact, before we do... Oh, no, we are. Damn it. Hello? Who is this? Mr. Todrick? Oh. It's you again. What now? What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Vert? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Todrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you be, but sure I am. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. The man I'm looking for is called Khan. He bought a suit from you, remember? Mr. Khan. Yes, I remember him. Yes, I delivered the suit to his hotel, the Hotel Ubu. Uh, I uh, don't remember the room number. It was upstairs, the second room on the right-hand side of the corridor. Thanks, Todrick. That's all I wanted to know. Now I've got you, Mr. Clown. Okay, so we found out that the that Mr. Khan is at the Hotel Ubu. And the calf's all boarded up. Shame. Nothing else to do here. Everything's... N I don't think... Um, Grovler does come back, but I don't know when he'll be back. But hope he might be back a bit later. We'll check back later. But before we go to the Hotel Ubu, we'll go back to see Nico. Hi. Oh, hello. Oh, you can't tell her. Oh well. I have to go. Okay, I'll see you later. Oh, uh, fuck it. Let's just go to the hotel. Ubu. The man looked like an amiable Bigfoot. The guy looked just like a weasel. Well, say hello to Flap and Guido. Excuse me. Yeah? Do you happen to know a guy named Khan? That ain't nobody I know. You ever meet a guy called Plantow? No, I ain't. You missed your chance. If you're quick, you'll catch him at the coroner's. Do you recognize the guy in this photograph? Is this a trick question? No, I simply asked if you recognized him. Okay then. No, I don't. Do you recognize this tissue? Think carefully now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm gonna have to hurry ya. Ooh. Eh, time's up, so I'll tell ya. It's a used tissue with a liberal dump of Bestheimer's number 12. 
If you say so. Quite a funny conversation with these two. Have you ever seen this clown's nose before? Nope. Shake my hand. Nah. Oh, rat. Uh, no. Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? No, I ain't. Don't tell me I missed him. Oh, that's too bad. I love the clowns, don't you? I've seen daytime television that was funnier. I love it when the little guys get hurt. That figures. Custard buys, hose pipe down a pants, then smack a plank in the kisser. Okay, nothing more to talk to Flap about. See you later. Not if you see me first. You can't examine the board, which is actually quite annoying. Let's go and have a look down here. Now, this area becomes important later, but there's nothing you can examine or interact with. I don't think. No, nothing new they've added. No. Excuse me. Yeah? Do you know a man by the name of Khan? No, I don't. It's very important I get to see him, and... I told you. I don't know it. Have you heard of a guy called Plantar? No. That name means nothing to me. Do you recognize the guy in this photograph? No, I never saw him. What does this tissue mean to you? Are you serious? Oh, yes. Take a good look at the substance it's smeared with. You are sick. Very sick. Have you ever seen this clown's nose before? No. Will you shake my hand? Are you joking? Who knows where it has been? What does this tool suggest to you? Hard labor. What the hell? Sound glitch? We're not in Ireland yet. A fucking goat just bared at me. I'm looking for a clown. Are you trying to be funny? No, I really am looking for a clown. There are no clowns here except you. Okay, so there's nothing more you can do here. Okay, if you go back outside, an interesting and funny event occurs. Just a minute, monsieur. What's your problem? No problem, if you cooperate. What do you want? Just a routine security check. Nothing to worry yourself about. Oh, well, all right. Search him, Flap. You bet. Hey, knock it off. Get off, you big ape. Nothing, Guido. Zilch. Our apologies, monsieur. What? I had to report you to the authorities. Round here, we are the authorities. You want I should break his arms? No. Let him go, Flap. Get lost, creep. Oh, yeah? And what if I don't? What if I call the cops? First, I break your arms at the elbows and wrists. Then, when you recover consciousness, I break your fingers. There's just one flaw in your plans, Ape Man. What's that? It's broad daylight. I don't think even you would assault me on a busy street. Of course, this tranquil square at the end of a cul-de-sac, this isolated corner of Paris that hasn't seen a street sweeper's brush since VE Day, this would be just about perfect for a mugging. Pardon me, I'm about to get very lost. See you later. Not if you see me first. Hey, Shorty, I didn't think much of your trick, little man. I don't know what you're looking for, but you picked on the wrong guy. Maybe you'll spread the word around the sewers. George Stobart is on the case. That's Stobart, two B's and two T's. It sounded impressive to me, but the weasel didn't seem to share my enthusiasm. Still, I figured you'd think twice before gunning me down in the street in cold blood. I do not like your tone. Oh, yeah? And what are you going to do about it? If you do not go away, I will gun you down in cold blood, right here in the street. 
without thinking twice about it. Hey, Shorty. Okay, so not very good what happens there. The woman was obviously English. She had all the qualities of Bodicea, Elizabeth I, and Margaret Thatcher rolled into one. It wasn't a pretty sight. I recognized the guy. It was the Nobel Prize winner from the country whose name I couldn't pronounce. If the tailor's description was correct, this was the killer's room. The sign on the door read 22. Hanging from a brass hook was a key and a plastic tag. Excuse me, monsieur. What? You are trying to steal that key, no? No way. It was the register of guests staying at the hotel. It was the register of guests staying at the hotel. There was no one registered under the name of Khan. If the killer was staying here, he'd used a different pseudonym. There was no one registered under the name of Khan. If the killer was staying here, he'd used a different pseudonym. I want some information. Who are you? The police? I'm conducting a private investigation. Ah, I know only too well what you mean. That is one of the drawbacks of the catering business. When people book into an hotel, they leave their morals at home, no? I've just been manhandled by a gorilla. Yes? I do not see any signs of a gorilla. No, not a real gorilla. It was a guy who looked like a gorilla. It happened right out front of this building. Let me get this quite clear. Are you complaining or bragging? I want to know what you're going to do about it. The scrawny one has a gun. I suggest you contact the police. Can't you do anything about them? What goes on in the streets of Paris is hardly my responsibility. So he's not very helpful, but we'll ask him about the key. About the key hanging on the hook over there. Oui, monsieur. Which room is it for? Number 21. Is that room taken? No. The guests checked out this morning. I'd like to check into room 21. That is not possible. How come? You said it was vacant. It is reserved for another guest. Rats. No, monsieur. Dutch. Do you know a man named Plantau? No, monsieur. Aren't you concerned that your guests are being intimidated by gangsters? No one else has complained, monsieur. Did they steal anything from you? Well, no. They didn't find what they were looking for. What was that? I don't know. I don't think they did either. I'm looking for a man who dresses like a clown. This is a highly respectable hotel, monsieur. There are no clowns here. If you say so. Do you have a guest by the name of Khan? No, monsieur. Perhaps you would care to check the register. I already did. Hello, you know I am telling the truth. May Saint Armand strike me down if I lie. The man who calls himself Khan has a scar on his right cheek. Raymond? I tell you, I do not know a man named Khan. Maybe not, but I noticed a change in his expression when I mentioned the scar. What do you make of this tool? <gasps> Stunning, monsieur. I bet you handle it like a professional. Hey, shake my hand. I'd rather not, monsieur. I'm still sore from the shock administered by one of the guests. He was secretly concealing an electrical device in the palm of his hand. Practical jokes are so puerile, don't you think? Oh, yeah, sure. Do you recognize this red nose? No, monsieur. What do you make of this tissue? 
Do you wish me to dispose of it for you, monsieur? Hey, no! It could be useful. I'm holding on to this. As you wish, monsieur. Perhaps you would like a little plastic baggie to keep it in? Nah, it's fine the way Okay, it is. so, um, as I said at the start of this let's play, there's a lot of talking, so my talking is going to be not a lot, but it's going to be a little bit while I'm walking around and doing various things. But while there is talking, I will be quiet, just so you guys can hear what everyone's saying. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Yes, monsieur. That man is one of our guests. What name? <laughs> I cannot tell you that. There was no one registered under the name of Khan. If the killer was staying here, he'd used a different suit. Okay, so let's talk to him, shall we? Excuse me. Didn't I see your picture in the news? You're that Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. Yes, that is me in person. I don't want to worry you, but have you had any threats on your life? You know, mysterious phone calls, letters made up of headlines cut from the newspaper. I don't know what you're talking about. What does this clown's nose suggest to you? In my country, we have no use for clowns. I'm glad to hear it. They were dealt with most severely in the last cultural cleansing. What about the mines? Did you get them too? All gone. Our streets are mine free. <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> Now, when I first played this game, I didn't actually catch on to the mine business. I don't think I did last time, but it's quite convenient how he mentions mimes and Nico's costume killer that she came to contact with was a mime and um, that might sound pretty ridiculous and stupid but <laughs> I never really it didn't really occur to me but anyway let's ask him about this does this goo smeared tissue mean anything to you no it doesn't may I shake you by the hand I do not shake the hands of imperialist dogs now that's a real bad attitude problem you've got there. Have you any idea what this tool might be used for? I cannot guess. Would it mean anything if I told you it was for lifting drain covers? Such technology fills me with wonder. Do you recognize this man? He calls himself Khan. Yes, I know this man. Why do you carry his photograph? I'm a private detective. What's your interest in Khan? He is an enemy of my people. You know he's a killer? Of course. Amongst other things. Would you help me investigate Khan? That is not possible. My instructions are to observe. I cannot jeopardize my position as an honored guest of this country's government. Have you seen a clown? I beg your pardon? The clown. A guy in funny pants. Have you seen him? My pants are from England. Marx and Spencer. They are a pleasure and a comfort to wear with much support. I'm real glad to hear that. You know, it's good to know you Nobel Prize winners are human too. In my country, the people make do with string and egg cartoons. For pants? For everything. Oppression is the mother of ingenuity. Do you know a guy called Plantow? I don't know anybody in Paris. Oh, well, this guy's dead anyhow. Why do you ask me about dead men? I have seen enough of death to last me a lifetime. I'm uh, sure you Okay, have. so there's nothing more you can ask him, so, or Oswald, or as his first name is, Bruno. So, yeah, you can't ask him anymore, so. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Now let's talk to this lady playing the piano who a lot of you will recognize. Hi there, ma'am. Well, hello. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a man. You disappoint me, my dear. For one foolish moment, I thought. But never mind. 
Aren't you going to tell me your name? George. George Stobart, ma'am. How sweet! I once had a stable boy called George. I am Lady Piermont. The common reaction is to kneel and stutter, but it's not obligatory. A real lady? I mean, you're an honest-to-God aristocrat? Oh, I don't know about that. Few of my ancestors are honest, not even to God. I can trace my family back to the Normans, but don't let that intimidate you, George. Beneath that impressive pedigree, I'm just flesh and blood. The blood may be blue, but the flesh is the plump beef of old England, so to speak. You appear distracted, George. Is there any way I can help you? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? My God, it's him! That's Merlin! She represented everything I loved about the English. The lady was totally deranged. Merlin? You mean King Arthur's wizard? Good heavens, no! Monsieur Merlin is a fellow guest. The man you know as Merlin is a fake. What do you mean, sweetie? He's a murderer. He also uses the name Khan. I am shocked, Mr. Stobart. Shaken. I took him to be a gentleman, a man of honor. You know, I'd rather like Pardon to me. assist you in stitching him up. Do you know what this is? I have a guess. I'd say it was a clown's nose. That's right. It was worn as a disguise by a vicious killer. Ah. Mr. Merlin, perchance. That's him. Does this tissue mean anything to you? I'm no shrinking violet, but that object makes oh, me feel quite Oh, they took out the line when she goes, good God, no. That's a great line. I just couldn't bring myself to use the buzzer on this dear lady. Can you think of any use for this tool, ma'am? Oh, I can think of someone I'd like to use it on. When did you last see Merlin? It was no more than an hour ago. He came downstairs and spoke to that clerk chappy. Something passed hands. I couldn't see what exactly. A briefcase? No, smaller than that. A bundle of papers, perhaps. The clerk put it in the hotel safe and Merlin went out. Are you sure you saw Merlin putting documents in the safe? Yes, darling, positive. I wonder what they were. Obviously something of great importance. Yeah. I'd sure like to get my hands on whatever it is. I'll bet they had something to do with Plantow's briefcase. Has Merlin returned to the hotel? No, he hasn't. Are you going to search his room? If I could get in there, I would. Did you know there's a gangster out front? What makes you think he's a gangster? The Italian suit and the bulge in his pocket? I know plenty of men with Italian suits and bulges in their pockets. That doesn't necessarily make them gangsters. That gangster I told you about? He went through my pockets just now. Good heavens! One never knows what to expect in foreign parts. Thank you for the warning, young man. I shall hide my credit cards in my underwear. Would you distract the clerk while I borrow a key? Are you asking me to aid you in a criminal act, darling? Oh, no. It's the key to an empty room. And why, may I ask, do you wish to gain access to an empty room? Do you plan to squat? No, ma'am. Scouts or not? I was never in the Boy Scouts, ma'am. Oh, you should have been. What were your parents thinking of? It's a fine way for a boy to get licked into shape. Now tell me, why do you want to get into that room? It's next to the room the killer is using. Ah, so you plan to eavesdrop on Merlin? I was hoping there might be a connecting door. Well, how can I refuse? I shouldn't think my feminine charms would be much use in this case, but a good dose of English arrogance might do the trick. I say, you there, flunky. We, oui, madame. Listen carefully. You do understand English, don't you? But of course, madame. Good. 
I wish to deposit some jewellery for safekeeping. I understand. Are you quite certain? Oh, bien sûr, madame. Over to you, my dear. Right, you can um wait and, and fail and she'll do it again, but there's no need to do that. There was no one registered under the name of Khan, but the name in the book for room 22 was Merlin. What now, monsieur? Do you recognize this key? That is the property of the Hotel Ubu. Correct. May I ask how it found its way from the little ook to your pocket? Would you believe it was put there by a poltergeist? No, monsieur. The hotel is regularly serviced by an exorcist. If we had a ghost, Father Fecond would have flushed it out. I suppose you want the key back. Not especialement. The room is vacant. Since you are so determined to conduct your little investigation, I won't stop you. I'd like to retrieve something from your safe. Ah, oui, monsieur. May I see some form of identification? Uh, like what? A driving license, perhaps? I don't drive. Your passport? I don't have it with me. I could show you my operation, Scar. I'm sorry, monsieur. I must have some form of unique ID. You won't find a more unique ID than my Scar. I'm sorry. I must insist on a more traditional identification. Okay, so he won't let you see what's in the safe. But... I'm going to end that here guys, but I won't be, um, well, I'll be making another video straight after I've ended this, so I'll be right back.